What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going over the uh, news that's all over the place right now. Obviously the big rider strike that has hit the Riders Guild of America that has seemingly shut down pretty much everything that was in production or going in production unless you have a handful of shows like uh, the uh, House of the Dragon or the Rings of Power series. They are going to press on without any on-site writers or anything, so they're just going to press on with what they have and just hope it turns out for the best, I think. The uh, writer strike has been going on for a couple of weeks now, I want to say, and uh, it all came to a head when they decided they had to strike because they're not being properly compensated. Uh, just like in uh, 2007, uh, they got they went on strike for the same thing as we know back then seasons got cut short or um, things just got completely shut down and uh, they were out of production with a lot of shows and movies from about November 2007 to February 2008 and uh, they're predicting that this one may not go as long because they you know they want to get everyone back to work but the best thing about it I think is a lot of the actors and everything that are involved in current projects that are in production is the fact that they are in complete solidarity with the Writers Guild. And they, and you have many instances, in fact, where you have actors showing up to these strikes on the picket lines and everything, showing their support for it. And I have some examples, like uh, right here we have Tom Ellis, who is famous for the Lucifer role that started out on Fox but then got canceled and picked up by Netflix. And here in the last couple of years wrapped up with uh, six seasons and... Gotta tell you, it's a hell of a show. I'm actually in the middle of re-watching it again. But he has come out and uh, he has a sign that says uh, something that's truly perfect for the situation. Where he says that you know, he is an actor and he literally does not know what to say. And you could not have a more perfect sign for this type of situation. Because if you didn't have these writers, you would not have movies or TV. Because they are just the imagination behind it all and it's great that you have actors come out and kind of recognize that and completely understand the fact that if it wasn't for them they wouldn't have any material or any shows or movies to actually put in production and along with tom ellis you also have people like pete davidson coming out and actually delivering food to these people he's out there he came out here in the last week or so and he delivered stacks of pizza to these people on these picket lines making sure that he that they know that he cares and that the, that they are appreciated for what the work they do and the hours they put in and he understands too that they should be properly compensated especially in these days where a lot of people or a lot of writers are not being paid what they should be through residuals or royalties or whatever because of streaming so they're fighting to have their contracts altered to where it will include better payment and everything for the work that they put in and here on this next one, we have another actor, Rob Lowe, out there on the picket lines at Paramount Studios doing the same thing, just showing that he is in complete solidarity with these people and just making it known and understanding that without them, he wouldn't have a job. And so it's really great to see these people come out and show their support. And I know there's probably many more out there, many more instances and everything where you have these actors coming out and showing their support and showing that they care and they understand that they wouldn't be where they are if it wasn't for the writers putting these words on paper and bringing these characters to life and everything, giving them substance and just everything you can imagine that goes into a production process. Now, unfortunately, yes, with this strike going on, as I mentioned, it has shut down Hollywood, where we are going to have to wait longer for certain shows and certain movies come out. And uh, some examples that I have, um, for one, Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai has been shut down. They were in the middle of uh, writing, I want to say. They hadn't, they hadn't gotten everything written for the season. They were kind of still in development. And they're working on their final season, which has been a hell of a show. It started out on YouTube. YouTube kind of got away from the scripted material. So Netflix swooped in and picked it up like they do with a lot of things. And it's just been one of their number one shows. And they brought back so many characters within the Karate Kid universe. And uh, introducing this whole new generation which has been very successful. I have watched that series from top to bottom. And it's just one hell of a show. You got a lot of talented kids on that show. And so it's a shame to see that this last season that we're already going to be waiting probably quite a while for is now being shut down and who knows how long it can be it could be a few weeks it could be a few months before any of these things go back in production and following up with that we have many more other shows and movies that are going to be shut down another big one 
is Stranger Things Season 5. Another instance of a show in its last season being shut down because they want to have these writers on site to do rewrites and polished lines and things like that to deliver the best possible product that they can. And so it's a real shame that this is being shut down because I was actually going to go down to Atlanta right around the time they're probably they were originally supposed to be filming in the hopes that I might catch something. You know, I know it's it, a lot of it would be hush hush and lockdown where you can't really get close to it, but I was going to kind of go around the area where they would be filming just to see if I could see something. This whole shutdown is even affecting the Marvel world. It has been announced that the Daredevil Reborn series itself also shut down. I'm not sure where they were in the process. I'm sure they're probably right in the middle of writing all the scripts and everything because it hasn't been that long since they announced the show was being reborn, you know, as it says in the title and everything because it originally started out on Netflix, so they wanted to bring that back because it was strongly voiced amongst a lot of its fans that they wanted to keep Charlie Cox as Daredevil and they wanted to keep the characters they introduced in that Daredevil series on Netflix because we also got the return of Wilson Fisk I can't recall the actor who plays him right now, but they had that same actor come back and be in Hawkeye. So it's uh, it's uh, just a real shame that th all of these productions are being put at a standstill because our writers are not being fairly compensated for the work that they do. And to kind of tack onto that, another Marvel thing that has been put on hold here recently is actually the Marvel version of Blade that was actually supposed to start shooting next month in Atlanta is effectively shut down and uh, so it really sucks that that was actually probably one of the few Marvel products or productions that I was actually kind of excited about because I, I really like the original ones with Wesley Snipes even though him the actor himself doesn't have the best reputation and everything but I was excited to see what they were going to do with this new actor and how they were going to introduce it into this giant world that they've built over the last decade and so it just it sucks that that's being shut down and, um, you know, there's many other instances I know where they're shutting down productions left and right because they don't want to go in production or go on filming things because a lot of these productions, they want to have these writers on site to possibly rewrite whole scenes or just rewrite certain lines and make lines better. And to kind of add insult to injury, as far as the shows that I was looking forward to that are supposed to be in production or maybe have wrapped up, that, uh, you know, Walking Dead, I really enjoy that show. Yes, the stories between all the spinoffs and the amount of spinoffs that they have pulled off here in the last 10 years has been kind of back and forth, up and down as far as the writing's concerned, as far as the fan base is concerned, whether or not they're milking it for all it's worth and all that. But I was looking forward to the Rick and Michonne spinoff to kind of close off that chapter of The Walking Dead where so many people, myself included, have been patiently waiting where they announced way back in 2018 we were going to get these three movies and then COVID happened and just shelved all that. And then after things finally settled down two plus years later, they come back and say, well, we're not going to do those movies anymore. We're going to do a limited series, which I guess is okay too. Just a lot of people were concerned about the length of the series and the fact that they're going to try to cram many, many hours of storytelling into what Everything that I've heard is only going to be six episodes. Hopefully that is going to be changed where they're going to actually make an effort to include a lot more story and actually more detailed story. But that show has been interrupted too where they, they were actually in the middle of production and like I said, they want to have writers on site. So that show has effectively gone dark too where we're not going to probably get it uh, in 2024 anymore. Maybe we'll get it late 2024 it's really hard to tell at this point because it all depends on how long this strike lasts and everything. But with the other spinoffs, as far as uh, Dead City with Maggie and Negan, the Daryl one, those have all wrapped production. So those are all in post-production right now, going through editing and everything else. But to see shows like that get interrupted is a real drag because along with other AMC properties... The other show that I was really looking forward to because I did reviews on all the first season was Interview with the Vampire. They were actually, I believe, getting ready to start up production and they are shut down as well. So along with all of that, aside from it being shut down, it was already going through its first shakeup where the uh, 
the character of Claudia was actually being recast to a completely different actress and everything, which is fine because Claudia's character is kind of limited as far as her involvement in the story anyways. But between that and now it being shut down, I'm sure a lot of our shows and movies and everything will probably be delayed a good six months, if not a year, just because the the amount of time it takes for them to film and rewrite and post-production and everything involved to make it a finished product. So all in all, the whole writer's strike and everything, it's good for them so they can get properly compensated for all the very hard work that they have to put in, all the long nights and everything, because you know they, these people pack into writer's rooms or whatever else to make sure that they have a product or a script that is meeting the standards of the uh, director and whatnot of the movie, TV show, whatever it happens to be. So good for them for standing up for what they need to make their livelihood a little bit better. But it does suck that we're going to lose out on shows that I was actually looking forward to. And I don't look forward to a lot of shows anymore. I think anymore I'm a lot uh, – I'm very jaded when it comes to a lot of these movies, especially because with Marvel, I was looking forward to like uh, Blade and everything like I mentioned but the degree at which Marvel has been pumping out content the last decade and change, it's it's a kind of it might be a welcome break. I might be alone in that thought, but I am ready to not see so much Marvel because they have just kind of been pumping out show and show, movie after movie. I have not caught up with Marvel like after the Infinity Stone saga. I just kind of caught it as I could. Uh, I have not seen Ant-Man, I have not seen Guardians of the Galaxy yet, and I'll probably wait until they're on streaming. But aside from that, it is a shame that we are going to have to lose out on precious uh, production time and everything to hopefully what will be a quick strike, but you just never know in this situation. You want to see these writers get paid what they're worth. But uh, anyways, guys, if you like that little bit of news and everything and my thoughts on it, please leave your thoughts below. I want to know what you have to say and what you have to think about the whole situation. What shows are you most excited for? What shows are you just bummed out that they're going to probably be delayed and everything? But uh, leave those comments, leave those likes. And if you like this channel, you like this type of content, please subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. You can also catch me on TikTok now at Crooked Chicken 7 I just do little skits or just little videos and everything. Nothing too crazy. I post when I can with the work schedule that I have and everything. And uh, I guess that'll do it, guys. So until next time, I'll catch you later. Bye.